because I know that the Heavenly Father is well pleased in giving you those things that you ask of him. So real quick, I'm going to jump to the book of Luke 12. Let's see, verse, verse 30 down to 32. It says, For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of the heavenly Father, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So the heavenly Father, it's his great pleasure to grant unto us the kingdom. You know, the kingdom that he promised unto his only begotten Son. And his only begotten Son told us that we, that we were going to be joint heirs with him, right along with him. So he gets the kingdom, we get the kingdom. He get the spiritual blessings. We get the spiritual blessings. We get that covenant, the everlasting covenant. He gets the everlasting covenant, vice versa, so on and so forth. But maintaining patience versus an utter regret is, is, is very important. That's why the scripture said to prove thy soul and find out what is evil for it. You got to find out what benefits you, you know. And it's a beautiful thing to even to even have that wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to decipher between the two. And because the majority of the world, the population here in today's time, you know, everything's lack of, lackadaisical with them. You know, it's a la di da di da mentality. And they pretty much are groping in the noonday because they walk in, in darkness, but they will proclaim that they are in the light. And it's not so. It's not even remotely true. <laughs> Remember that scripture. <laughs> uh, when it, uh, when a guy brought his offering, he said, oh, Lord, I'm not like these sinners. You know, he looked at the sinner next to him, trying to make an atonement for his sins, you know. But he downed him. He downplayed him. Because it's not anything of, of works, not anything of bragging and boasting. But just maintaining that patience and that discipline through the spirit and the power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, it's, it's, it's a blessing, you know. So at the end of the day, it's just the water you have about Shem Yahweh Shah for continuously allowing thine spirit, thine Holy Spirit to be instilled inside of me. Not the spirit of evil, not the spirit of contention, not the spirit of strife, strife, not the spirit of wickedness, but the spirit of patience, the spirit of discipline, the spirit of wisdom, understanding, continual knowledge, you know, those spiritual gifts. Because th that's what's most important. Now I'm going to jump down to Psalms 40 and verse 2 says, he brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. So the Heavenly Father gives you a, a strong and firm foundation to stand upon. Even if you come from, you know, the miry clay, swampy waters, an unstable foundation, when he grants unto you his hand, the scripture says that, that his hand is stretched out still, you know. He allows that opportunity of change. He allows that opportunity for growth. Verse 3, And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our power. Many shall see it in fear and shall trust in the Lord. So he did what? He allowed you to, to, to sacrifice the song of praise, to sacrifice with your lips. He didn't require a turtle dove from you. He didn't require a, a burnt offering from you. Sacrifice him with your lips. Sacrifice unto him with praise. That's what the Heavenly Father is, 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 is requiring of the nation of Israel in this time. It says, Blessed is that, is that man that maketh the Lord his trust and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. You know, whether that individual is a family member, whether that individual is a co-worker, whether that individual is your best friend you can't be a respectful person and you can't respect haughty looks you can't respect the proud in tongue the proud in speech you can't respect them or as such to turn aside to lies and abound in mischief as it is written it says many O lord my power are thy wonderful works which thou hast done and thy thoughts which are to us work they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee if I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. And that's the works of the Heavenly Father. They're innumerable. Even as his son, Yahweh Shai, from the world called Jesus Christ, when he was upon the scene, when you read in the last chapter, it says what? That many other great works did he do 
but the world, if they were written, would not be able to contain the books. You know, and that speaks volumes, man. It's that sacrifice and offering thou dost not desire. Mine ears hast thou opened, burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me, right? Isn't that written in the book of John? Which shows you that the Old Testament and the New Testament links together. You know, going for these people who say that the Old Testament was done away with. No, it's one book. You can't read, uh, uh, get the chapter, chapter 30 without going through chapters 1 through 29. I delight to do thy will, O my power. Yea, thy law is within my heart. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, I have not refrained my lips, O Lord, thou knowest. And that's true. The Heavenly Father does know your heart, right? You know this old saying from the world, the Lord know my heart. While you eat a pork chop sandwich, while you go commit adultery, while you sell drugs to your people, the Lord know my heart. He know my thoughts. He know my intentions. But yeah, I'm going to do evil. I'm going to do the contrary. But it says, I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, I have not refrained my lips, O Lord, thou knowest. Thou knowest our works. Thou knowest our, our, our acts, our labors. You knoweth all these things. You know our contrite spirit. You know those with a prideful spirit. It says, I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. Withhold not thou thy tender mercies from me. O oh Lord, let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually preserve me. You know, and that goes into the tender mercies of David. But allowing the Heavenly Father to work his work and praying that he continuously preserve you. That's patience. That's patience. Because the scripture says that a righteous man falleth seven times but getteth up again. So knowing that the Heavenly Father will continue to preserve thee because your so-called heart is in the right place. And even though you may stumble at the stones and you get back up, you dust yourself off and you say, I'm not going that way again. That's what it's all about. As you want him to cont continuously preserve thee or preserve you, you have to continuously change. You have to continuously modify. You have to continuously seek out the righteousness for his name's sake. And as I speak and, and do these topics and these lessons, they may be for the public, so to speak, because they're going on, on the YouTube. But all of these are for me. The scripture says to work out thine own salvation with fear and trembling. The scriptures tell us to do what? Blessed is he that read it. So as I read these scriptures, as, as I do these, these topics and these lessons and, and, and these videos, that's that preservation that I'm really crying out to you how about Shimmy how shot for. Because the scripture says that, that he is not unrighteous to forget your works and labor of love that you do unto his name. It says, For innumerable evils have compassed me about, mine iniquities have taken hold upon me, so that I am not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of mine head, therefore my heart faileth me. And that diverse time coming to you. That, that, that adversity, those hardships, that sunken place, that slumber, they come and they go. But the Heavenly Father, he remained faithful still. It says, be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make hates to help me. Let them be ashamed and confounded together that seek after my soul to destroy it. Let them be driven backward and put to shame that wish me evil. And that's why these people that trouble you on your jobs, these people that trouble you in the public scene, on the roadways, different things of that nature, you know, your tongue is a is a very powerful weapon. And you have to be careful with the, the so-called blessings and curses that you throw out there and because a little birdie will take that message and, and have it delivered. So you got to be real precise and, con and concise. It says, let them be desolate for a, re for a reward of their shame that say unto me, aha, aha. Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. Let such as love thy salvation say continually, the Lord be magnified. But I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Thou art my help and my deliverer. Make no tarrying on my power. 